All right, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the What's New in Autodesk InfraWorks 360 webinar. Now, my name is Stephen Ellis and I'm the Australian and New Zealand Civil Infrastructure Technical Specialist for Autodesk. So before we get started with the webinar, we have, we just have a few ground rules to go over. So any questions you have throughout the webinar, please type them into the questions dialog box that you have on your GoToWebinar. And we'll have some time at the end of, to answer any questions that you guys may have. Okay, so there have been some major developments over the past two releases, um, both in the way you purchase and in the tools that you can use to design. So we'll look at the developments in design context, interoperability with other Autodesk products, detailed engineering capabilities. Uh, we have a major feature announcement with the addition of mobility simulation. We'll cover some user uh, interface upgrades and finally we'll look at collaboration and sharing. Now just before we go in and jump into the full um, presentation here, I've got a poll that I just want to run quickly. So I'm just going to launch that now. Okay, so you should see the, the, the poll question up there now. And so you're currently using uh, InfraWorks 360 for project work. So we've got a yes if you are, no if you're not using InfraWorks at all, and testing if you're just testing and not in the actual use phase. Okay, so we've got quite a few 50%-ish testing, 30 yeses, and 20 noes. Okay, great, thank you very much. I'll close it down now. All right, now let's dive into the, uh, the presentation itself. Okay, so let's, uh, let's begin with InfraWorks and how it's easier to buy now. Okay, so InfraWorks 360 now includes the roadway, bridge and drainage design functionality in the core product. You no longer have to purchase them as separate add-ons like you did in the past. Now, there has also been a significant price reduction, so best if you talk to your resellers uh, about what that, what that means for you. So moving on to uh, the design context components of the up update. So there have been major improvements to Model Builder with updated OpenStreetMaps data. Information available is more detailed and accurate. You can see in the top corner the difference between older versions and the latest. So the level of detail is greatly improved. Other improvement uh, is in the terrain data with the background processing changes providing more accurate details. And you can also see in the video looping that you have the ability to link into OpenStreetMaps data and link to the websites that's holding that data. So you actually see uh, what it is when it was created and, and all the information about that information that's been downloaded. So I guess in terms of just a bit of a tip here, so, so so 90 meter DEM, which is what downloads um, uh, in the beginning, is fine for sort of rural greenfield style projects. But in an urban environment, uh, I'm sure as many of you will have come across the issue with spikes in the terrains. So I'd like to make you aware of some free 5 meter DEM data that can be downloaded from the Geoscience Australia website. Uh, as you can see from the video here, I'm updating some terrain data in the Parramatta CBD. And you can see that that removes those spikes from the buildings in the terrain when you update that information. Uh, so check out the Geoscience website. Uh, this is a great source of free data uh, to get your project started early. And the, the website there for the the, um, the link is there. So www.ga.gov.au uh, slash Elvis. So an exciting new addition to the software is the raster terrain overlays. And so this will allow you to overlay many different image formats into your model. And it gives you full control over the location, scale, rotation. So as well as like plans and 
data like that, you can pull in sort of images to, to pretty up your models. So the, the correlation tools are a powerful way to get your images aligned into the model. So it uses a, a three-pick uh, process so that you can warp the image um, into, into best fit alignment. Uh, you can also control the opa opacity and the display orders of multiple images as well. So you'll be able to build up a whole lot of different information into your, into your model as overlays. So you see here that's that three-pick process that's going through and just aligning it as best fit. And this is changing the opacity over in the corner, then the asset card that comes up. And now we'll just look at some display order and showing how you can you can have multiple images in the one file. So similar to the rest of overlays, you can now import all of your CAD data. Uh, so whether it's 2D, it may be you know, not geo-referenced as well. So you have full control over the location, scale and rotation. And you also have the same correlation, opacity and display order tools as you do with the raster overlays that we saw before. So that same three-pick um, warping is, is available for CAD data that may not be geo-referenced that you may want to bring in. So another update to InfraWorks 360 is the ability to upgrade the cloud version of a model. So note that the administrator of the model has the ability to control who has access to upgrading certain models. And note also that you do not have to upgrade the cloud version. You can take a copy of the model leaving the cloud version intact. That's an important point to recognise is that upgrading the model no longer interrupts the team workflow because you are now able to upgrade the cloud version of the model and it also guides you through the process. Uh, these changes help to minimise the amount of disruption at upgrade time, allowing you and your team to continue working on your projects while still being able to immediately benefit from the latest updates of the software. So the, the final update in the design context portion of the presentation is the improved bookmark experience. So bookmarks are, an extremely use, are extremely useful as they allow you to capture certain viewpoints in your model and share them with your project team to assist in navigation. Also when publishing to the web so you can share with people who only have a web browser. The UI has been updated making it easier to navigate. Uh, with a constantly updating model you can now update the bookmark thumbnails uh, all of these tools will help you navigate and display your models uh, to, to others. Here you can see there the, there's the updates to those views. All right, let's uh, move on to interoperability with other Autodesk products. So you can now, um, with a right click and send to Revit, export your bridges directly to Revit. Uh, this export is not just a solid image of the bridge, uh, it's a, it is a functioning design uh, being brought over into Revit. And all, compo all the components have been created and it makes it a fantastic base um, to start your detailed design and all of the components that come through can be edited. There you can see all of the components have come through. Seen so another example uh, of improved interoperability. When you open a roundabout created in InfraWorks 360 in Civil 3D, not only does it automatically become a corridor, uh, it also becomes a functioning vehicle tracking roundabout, meaning that you can use Autodesk vehicle tracking tools to continue 
your detailed design of that roundabout, and then you can start to change the uh, the design standards that are applied to it through the uh, AVT tools. So now let's look at improvements to the detailed engineering capabilities. So we'll start with improved road, edit, uh, road editing performance. Uh, you'll find the grip editing and responsiveness has been improved. It's just a, it's a lot a lot faster now and, and much more responsive and less jerky. So uh, edits in the profile uh, view have been improved too. So you can make several changes now to an alignment, and you'll see those just on the controls, both in the profile and on on the model. Uh, and then once you're happy, you can commit and have them applied to the full model as you see we pick off the screen. That's now applied to the full model. So moving on to improvements to the roundabout functionality. There are now more grips uh, and assets, asset cards to allow you to control more of your design. So you can see we've got got more grips for the uh, central turn radiuses and uh, the island adjustments. You can also grab and extend the legs to the roundabouts as well as just dynamic movement of the, the turning radius as well. So these give you greater horizontal control over your design. So vertical design capabilities have been improved too. You can control the elevation, tilt and direction. Again, all very easy to use using the on-screen grips and also on the asset cards as well if you want to actually type in you know, values that you want it to define. So each release has seen major improvements uh, to the intersections and interchange design capabilities, and this release isn't any different. Uh, we now have the ability to design merges, and diverges, and weaving lanes. And we're getting into some quite complicated interchanges there. And so finally, ramps have been added. Once an alignment has been designed at a sharp enough angle, the ramp functions will be applied, as you can see here. Uh, and so it includes an acceleration or deceleration lane and all the markings that are associated with it. Uh, so all of these details are editable with either grips or again with the asset card as you click on the designs, on the elements, sorry. Okay, central median turn lanes have been added too. Uh, it's been requested for a long time, it's finally in there. So again, all details uh, are editable via grips and on asset cards. Again, it's just a click and drag to, to create the, the lane itself. So you'll also find some improvements in the area of traffic simulation, namely in the support of more configurations. So all of those improved configurations that we just talked about earlier are all now supported through the traffic simulation section as well. So this includes the entry and exit ramps, the median turn lanes, and improvements to the roundabouts as well. So there have been some improvements around just general road design too. Uh, first you uh, will find that more complex intersections are possible. You can see in that top, top right corner there, there's some quite complex intersections available. Uh, and in traffic simulation, there have been some improvements by making it easier to interface with the results of the actual simulation itself. Uh, we've also made it possible to export those results for downstream validation uh, and reporting. So you can see we can zoom around and actually click on and, and interact with the actual the graphics there. And then there's the reporting functionality. Okay, so you now have the ability to assign textures uh, to your bridge components. Uh, also note that the textures themselves are multi-scale textures, meaning that they'll look good from up close and from a distance as well. So that's across the board that um, the multi-scale textures are uh, enabled now in, in InfraWorks.
Okay, there have been a number of drainage improvements too. Local rainfall data can now be applied to the model. Uh, these can be imported from a file or you can manually add the information as well. And you can assign that data to obviously different functions in the software once you've, once you've loaded that information in. Uh, we can also import 2.5D data. And so say GIS information that has a whole lot of attributes associated with it. Simfraworks can create 3D design elements from that data and the understood attributes that are attached to that GIS information. So this is just showing the application of some of those um, custom rainfall data resizing pipe networks. So continuing on with the drainage improvements, we can now add uh, details that are not within the road surface. So previously you could just define with on the road pavement. Now we can go outside as you can see in the little video that's playing here now. Uh, so we can edit many fields that previously we couldn't, such as tributary area, time of concentration and runoff coefficient. And we can use the correct rainfall data as well, of course, that we just saw before. Uh, we can then use the analysis tools to go and check our design and then have the software solve problems uh, and update, update the design. And the main focus here is that we can now start designing outside of the road area with, uh, with inlet areas. see here our analysis going through now. That's changed, no longer surcharging. Okay, so now let's look at um, mobility simulation. So this is an entirely new feature set in InfraWorks 360. Mobility simulation will allow you to analyse multiple modes of transportation at once, including taxis, transit, ride sharing, walking and cycling. Uh, you can create animations to help communicate your results with others. This tool will help you determine economic and environmental impacts and make decisions earlier in your projects. So it's really expanding on the whole traffic analysis. Okay, let's, let's now look at our user interface improvements. So these are major changes to the user interface. We're introducing the contextual stack. Uh, the panel will appear on the right of your screen by default and replaces many of the individual asset cards and dialog boxes that you've uh, been used to seeing to use uh, to modify uh, all the information in your model. Uh, so this has been combined into one user interface. It's context sensitive and responds to what you select in the model. Uh, you can make it persistently available so that you don't have to keep opening and closing asset cards. It's also highly customizable and dockable and you can control what properties and groups are visible for specific object types. So this really just makes it a lot neater to, to manage your, your, your you know, your real estate space there. And so finally, let's look at improvements to the collaboration and sharing functionality. So we have improved the collaboration and sharing capabilities by first adding this web administrator portal, which allows you to control what is being published to the web. Uh, you can see uh, your choices are scenarios, panoramas and proposals. Uh, so the panorama view are a much higher resolution now. Uh, you can also enable and disable the panoramas 
right from in the bookmark asset card. So we, we looked at the, the bookmarks earlier, so you can disable them from there. Uh, and probably just another one to focus on is in the proposals. Previously, you could just publish the master. Now it's giving you access to be able to publish um, any proposal you've created or multiple proposals as well. All right, so now let's look at how you get that the latest version if you're not already updated. So there are a few different ways. If you're a current customer, uh, check your application manager. You should find the updates to InfraWorks 360 listed here and you simply launch the installation from there. Um, if you don't have application manager installed or you're not sure how to use it, you can go to manage.autodesk.com and download the update um, where you get all your other Autodesk products from. And if you're not a customer at all and you want to try InfraWorks 360, uh, you can download the latest version in a free 30-day trial uh, by going to autodesk.com slash InfraWorks. Uh, so go and get the latest version and start designing, guys. So that's it in terms of the, the update on InfraWorks 360. Um, just an update on some other webinars that are coming up in the near future. We have cloud rendering in A360 and lighting analysis for Revit on the 13th of July, Wednesday. And then our Revit into advanced steel workflows on Wednesday, the 27th of July. And um, if you want to register for any of those, uh, just head into the autodesk.com.au uh, campaigns slash webinars slash AEC webinars. Uh, that'll get you to, to those locations to register. Uh, just some additional resources. There's our ANZ YouTube channel where all of the um, Australian New Zealand tech specialists uh, post our information. So this, this video will be posted up there in the next day or so. And that's my contact details there as well if you want to ask any further in-depth questions uh, about InfraWorks or any other civil products that we have. And that's it. So now I'll jump in and have a look and see if there's been any questions posted. If you want to ask any, um, throw them into that the questions page now and I'll just go back to my contact details there in case you want to email me direct. Just opening up my questions panel. Ah, Paul, I am going to be in Melbourne shortly and I'm going to email you uh, this afternoon. I'm just booking in all my flights now. Uh, so Chris has asked, um, does the road uh, turn lane components export to Civil 3D as a corridor? No, not at this stage. Uh, the roundabouts definitely do, obviously, as you saw there. The road intersections, no. Uh, the main reason that the roundabouts are in at the moment is because, obviously, it's very standardised. It's coming from a, a rigid set of standards that are defining that information. Uh, they've also built in the... Uh, the, you know, the the Autodesk vehicle tracking um, calculation you know, engine has been built into um, InfraWorks 360 itself. So they're all running now across the three. So InfraWorks 360, AVT, and Civil 3D are all running on a consistent calculation engine to to create all all of that information. Uh, so Neil's asking, is it still Ashto standards or is it customised for Austroads? No, it's still the Ashto standards as the basis that it's reading in. And yes, I'll post a video of this um, this webinar to the YouTube channel shortly, um, maybe even this afternoon. Right, 
not getting any more coming through. Um, if there's a bit of a lag or anything and I'm missing anyone's questions, uh, I get a report from this at the at the end of the webinar as well and anything that I haven't answered now, if it comes through as a lag, I'll, I'll get back to you straight away or as quickly as I can with an answer. All right, I might wrap it up here and thank you all very much and I will talk to you again at the next webinar. Thanks guys.